In this video, we're going to introduce the Arrhenius equation. Now, at the root of this equation is the dependence of reaction rates on temperatures. And this is actually something that we haven't talked about yet. So I want to give a little bit of a primer. So, um, you know, we, we talked about this reaction coordinate diagram that I introduced in the first video of the previous unit, right, where you've got uh, some reaction coordinate, right? You start out with your reactants. It has the energy increases as the reaction progresses. It has to overcome an activation energy barrier, which I'm denoting here as E sub A. And then eventually it goes down to the products, right? This is how more or less every reaction coordinate looks. Of course, there's differences in the relative energies of the reactants and the products, but every reactant has to go over some activation energy hill and then rolls down to the products, right? So, um, so right now we're, we're just making sure that you have an understanding of this concept of an activation energy where I feel like this idea of temperature is intuitive, um, is in a common example that everyone's familiar with. So, um, so you've all have seen, or hopefully you haven't drank any spoiled milk, but you know that milk spoils over time, right? Milk contains lactose, and when it interacts with water in the atmosphere and the air, um, it forms lactic acid. And this is a part of the spoiling process of milk. And you know that if you put it in the refrigerator, right, this process is going to happen fairly slow, right? You have an expiration date on the milk that's usually at least a couple weeks out. It'll happen pretty slowly if you leave it in the refrigerator. But if you leave it outside of the refrigerator, if you don't refrigerate the milk after you get it and you just leave it on your countertop, then the milk could be completely spoiled if after a day or so, right? That process that allows the milk to spoil happens a lot faster when it's inside, when it's outside the refrigerator versus when it's inside those refrigerated temperatures, right? So that gives us kind of a basis, a little bit of an intuitive understanding here of, of you know, the fact that this is the same exact process but it's happening much faster at higher temperatures than it does at lower temperatures. So we know that there's an inherent dependence of, um, of with, uh, with respect to temperature on our reaction rates. But if we write out our rate laws, right? So let's say we were to write out a, a hypothetical rate law for this reaction, right? Let's say we have the rate would be equal to, you know, some rate constant. You got your, C, your lactose here and h2o this is just assuming that it's first order in both you know you would have some rate expression that looks like this right where is the temperature dependency right there is none as we have right here right you have a rate which is just going to be some time right uh some time dependence the rate constant some concentrations you don't have any explicit dependence uh with with temperature on the rate laws that's where our Arrhenius equation comes in. It allows us to be able to define the uh, temperature dependence of chemical reactions by, re by uh, relating it to the activation energy and the rate constant. So what is our Arrhenius equation? So our Arrhenius equation is uh, expressed in a couple different ways. I'm actually gonna give you a couple different ways to express Arrhenius' equation. So the first is that you can express it as the rate constant, right? Our rate constant K, times a constant A that I will talk about more in just a second, E to the negative E sub A over RT. Now, R is the gas constant that you're familiar with from studying the ideal gas law, right? So R uh, plays a role here in Arrhenius' equation. Here's your temperature dependence, right? Temperature is in this equation, your activation energy. Now, A is what we call the frequency factor. the frequency factor. Now, in order to understand this, we have to talk a little bit about something called collision theory. So collision theory is the idea that chemical reactions happen as a result of the collision of two particles, right? So you'll have some particle, if you have A reacting with B, in order for them to react, these particles that are moving have to explicitly collide with one another, right? In a violent collision that results in some product, right? The frequency factor is insight into how frequent those collisions are occurring for a chemical reaction, right? And K, of course, is our rate constant that we're familiar with calculating at this point, right? So that's our rate constant. And obviously E sub A is activation energy. 
Okay, cool. So, uh, so this is one form of Arrhenius' equation. Um, now, another form that we can get is called the linear form of Arrhenius' equation. And in order to get that, we're going to have to do a little algebra in order to get the linear form of Arrhenius' equation. So what I want to do first is just take the natural log of both sides. Right? So we take the natural log of K and we take the natural log of A times e to the negative e sub a over rt. Now, um, obviously this is valid since we're doing the same thing algebraically on both sides, we still maintain correct algebra. Um, one thing that I wanna do here is use a property of natural logs. So there's a property of natural logs where if you have the natural log of ln a or natural log of a times b, that can be rewritten as natural log of a plus the natural log of b. So what we can do is break this guy up and say we got the natural log of the frequency factor plus this guy. When you take the natural log of an exponential, all that stuff just comes down, right? So we got negative e sub a over rt, right, is equal to ln k. Right, so now I'm going to just kind of re-express this in the following way just to make a point here. So R one over T plus LN A LN K. Right now, I wrote it this way to show you that this is again the same form of a linear equation. We got Y equals MX plus B, right? So um, what this means is that if you were to plot the natural log of the rate constant times over, with respect to the inverse and the temperature, you would get a linear relationship, which this is always useful. So we call this the linear Arrhenius equation. So this is the linear form of the Arrhenius equation. Right, so this is your, I guess we'll just call it the traditional um, Arrhenius equation. And then this is your linear form, right? So this form here is your linear form of Arrhenius's equation, right? So this is really you. This is really useful because it allows you a, a experimental route to calculate the activation energy, right? If you have the rate constant, and of course you have the temperature that the reaction is uh, being done at, then you have a route to actually figure out experimentally the uh, the activation energy for this reaction, right? So, so this gives us a good platform here um, in order to discuss Arrhenius's equation. Um, these are the two forms that are really most common, um, the general form and the linear form. So in the next video, what we're gonna do is put these equations to the test, use them to solve some problems um, in chemical kinetics to get either the activation energy um, or solve for temperature or frequency factor.